In this tutorial, I will be demonstrating some of the features available in 2.5 and 3D CAD. First, click the new icon and click 3D Part. In the panel, you will see a split view, where on the left you have a 2D view of the object you're creating, and on the right you will have a 3D view. In the first part of this tutorial, I will be demonstrating how you can use the Boolean Operations tool. With the rectangle tool selected, draw a square on the left side of the panel. After checking the drawing in, you will see it appear on the right side of the panel. Here, you can select the object to adjust its height. To do so, click on the edge of the object and input the height in inches. Now, with the circle tool, I'm going to draw a circle on top of the square. Since the default height for drawn objects is 1 inch, you will see the cylinder protruding from the square. However, we're going to want to make a circular cutout from the square. In order to do so, we must check off is absolute. This allows for the cylinder to be offset from the zero point on the y-axis rather than the surface of the object it is placed on. In order to make a circular cutout in the square, you need to make the cylinder's height equal to zero, which you can see me doing now. Now we are going to use the copy tool to make a replica of the object we just created. So click and drag around the entire object to select all entities and right click to confirm. In the parameters panel on the right hand side, you can specify the offset and the location that you want to place this copy. Here you will see me increasing the X offset by 2 inches. You will notice that our new copy has been made with the default offset value of 1 inch, so we will have to repeat the same process as before to create the circular cutout. We will, however, keep the height of the square at 1 inch. Next, we are going to be using the Boolean operations tool, but first we need to overlap our objects. Now we are going to click on the Boolean Operations icon in the top toolbar. This feature can be used to modify one shape by adding or subtracting another shape to it. The three available operations are Weld, which would be combining solid areas, Weld Cutouts, or Subtract. Select Perform Boolean Operations, then select the specific operation in the Parameters window, then select the objects one at a time, and right-click to confirm each selection. The first object selected will be modified by the second. With the weld operation type selected, you will see that our two objects have turned into one. However, this new object does not have circular cutouts like our original two objects did. In order to fix this, we must switch the operation type to weld cutouts. Once you are satisfied with the results, this portion of the tutorial is completed. Next, we are going to demonstrate how you can utilize the corner tool and the offset tool. For this demonstration, I will simply be creating a rectangle and keeping the default vertical offset. Then, navigate to the Modify section of the toolbar and click the corner icon. This tool allows you to apply chamfers or fillets to shapes. Applying a chamfer will replace a corner with a sloped edge, and applying a fillet will replace a corner with a rounded edge. With the fillet mode selected, either click on the two adjacent edges to one corner, or click on the corner itself. You can modify the radius of this rounded edge in the parameters panel. Check these parameters in and you will see the corresponding changes appear in the right display panel. I will now just quickly repeat this process for the opposite corner. Keep in mind that for both chamfers and fillets, you can scale the size of this modification by clicking and dragging your mouse towards or away from the shape center. Now we are going to apply an offset to this shape, so locate the corresponding icon in the top toolbar. Click and drag your mouse to select the entire object and then right click to confirm. With select chain checked off, you can also click one segment of the object and all touching segments or entities will be included in this selection. 
This tool duplicates selected features and positions them a specified distance away from the original feature. As you can see, the default offset is too large for the entirety of the duplicate object to fit within the original object, which is why you will see me decreasing the offset in the parameters panel now. If you check off the bidirectional checkbox, you will see two copies of your original object offset in both directions. The reversed feature applies to one copy and it determines which direction your copy will be offset from the original object. You will also find that the chamfer and fillet tools are integrated into this feature. More specifically, check off use arc connectors to create a copy with rounded corners and check off use lines to close wires to create a copy with sloped corners. Now we are going to modify the vertical offset of the copy of our original object in order to create a bowl-like shape. Click the edge of the copy to access the vertical offset parameters. Since the original object has a height of 1 inch, we are going to check off is absolute and set the copy's height to 0.25 inches. Once you are satisfied with these changes, you are finished with this portion of the tutorial. Now we are going to be working with the Extend, Trim, and Scale tools. With the Line tool selected, I am going to be drawing a triangle, however I am not going to connect the last edge with the first edge. This is where both the Extend and Trim tools can come in handy. Navigate to the Extend icon in the top toolbar. Then hover over the desired segment and you will see a preview in blue of what the extension will create. Finally, click your mouse to confirm this extension. Next, navigate to the trim tool to remove the extra part of the segment that extends from the corner. Next, we are going to use the scale tool to change the size of our triangle. Click and drag over the entire object and right click to confirm. With the point in factor mode selected, choose a center point on the left display panel and increase or decrease the scale factor in the parameters panel. Make sure to check in your changes before moving on. Next, I'm going to just undo my changes, that way I can demonstrate the other mode of scaling. When scaling in three points mode, Select the entirety of your object and right click to confirm, then select a point near the center of your object and another near the perimeter of your object. From here, you can drag your mouse inward and outward to increase or decrease the size. Click your mouse to select the size. After completing these steps, you have finished this portion of the tutorial. Next, I will be demonstrating the fixed drawing tool. First, click on the Line Segment tool and choose Continuous Line. Create a rectangle where one corner has overlapped lines and the other corner is unclosed. Since our goal here is to create a perfect rectangle, there are obviously two errors that we need to fix and we can use the Fix Drawing tool to solve these errors. The join tolerance will apply to any line segments that have gaps between them, and the overlap tolerance will apply to any line segments that need trimming. For each of these parameters, you can specify a tolerance larger than any of the errors in the drawing. As you can see, there were no issues detected with the parameters I specified because the existing errors are larger than 0.1 inches and 0.001 inches. After increasing the tolerance, both issues were detected, so I can press Fix All to resolve all the issues automatically. Once your drawing appears in the 3D panel, this means that it is error-free and you are finished with this portion of the tutorial. Next, I will be demonstrating how you can use the Curve Text tool and the Explode tool. I'm going to be using the Circle and Boolean Operations tools to create a moon shape. Use the circle tool to draw two circles where one is smaller and overlaps the other.
After confirming these changes, navigate to the top toolbar and click Boolean Operations. Choose the Subtract Operation Type. Then select the objects that you want to perform Boolean operations on one by one. Make sure to right click to confirm and keep in mind that the first selected object will be the one that is subtracted from or added to. Once you are happy with the moon shape you've created, click on the text tool. You can change the parameters of your text on the right hand side where I will be changing the text to crescent moon and decreasing the size. Once you are happy with the text you've created, make sure to place it in the drawing workspace by clicking the panel. Check in your changes and click on the curved text icon. First select your text object and right click to confirm, and then select the curve you want to place your text on and right click to confirm. In the parameters panel, you can specify where your text begins on the curve by adjusting the text start parameter. You can also adjust its alignment with respect to the purple positioning point. Set new curve will allow you to click a new curve to place the text on, and flip curve will place the text on the other side. Vertical alignment allows you to specify where you would like to place the text with respect to the curve. Kerning offset allows you to adjust the space between each letter. Line spacing applies to multiple rows of text where you can increase or decrease the space between each line. Once you are satisfied with your curved text, there is still one more thing we need to do to make sure that this text appears in the 3D panel as well. Our text must be exploded to be more easily editable, so find the explode icon in the top toolbar. Select your curved text object and right click to confirm. This setting will transform our text from one unified object to numerous line segments. As you can see, the isAbsolute parameter is unchecked by default as all of our text is offset from object surfaces rather than the zero Y coordinate. By clicking and dragging our mouse over all the text entities, we can check off this parameter for all letters at once, leveling them with the top surface of the moon. Next, we are going to use the bridge tool to connect the inner portions of certain letters to the moon. That way they are not lost when the letters are cut out. Now you will just see me going to each E and O in the text and creating bridges between the inner portions of the letters and the moon. If you need to adjust the bridge width, you can do so in the parameters panel. After adding the necessary bridges, we can now make the letters into cutouts. Click and drag your mouse to select all of the text entities. Make sure that is absolute is checked and set the offset to 0 inches. After checking in your changes, you are finished with this portion of the tutorial. Now I will be demonstrating how you can use the Cut, Group, and Ungroup tools. First, navigate to the Cut Tool icon in the top toolbar. You can use this feature to divide an entity such as an arc or line segment into multiple sections. You will now see me using the Cut Tool to divide the top edge of the rectangle into two halves. Simply click the mouse at the position on the entity where you want the cut to be made. You can verify the cut by hovering the cursor over the feature. Only a part of it will highlight if the cut worked properly. After checking in these cuts, I can now click on the new segments and manipulate the shape of my object. Now that my object is divided into multiple segments, I will be demonstrating how you can use the Group tool. First, click the icon in the top toolbar. Then, use your mouse to select the entities that you would like to group and right-click to confirm. If you use this tool properly, you should see that all selected entities will be highlighted at once when you hover over part of them. 
This feature unifies the line segments into one object where we can no longer manipulate the shape of the object as easily. If you want to revert your object into multiple line segments like it was before, you can simply use the ungroup tool to do so. I'm going to be using a different project to demonstrate how to use the ungroup and ungroup all tools, and I will explain the difference between the two. First, you will notice that every single shape or segment is ungrouped in this project. We are going to use the group tool to group each of the three entities separately. Simply click and drag your mouse over the entities you would like to group and right click your mouse to confirm. Now that we have three unified objects, we are going to use the group tool a fourth time to unite them. If you hover over one of the objects and see that all three are highlighted, you have grouped them successfully. Now we are going to use the ungroup tool on all of the three grouped objects. Once you right click your mouse to confirm, you will see that they have been ungrouped into subgroups. Now I'm going to press Ctrl Z to undo that command and to regroup all three objects so I can demonstrate the ungroup all command. Click the ungroup all icon in the top toolbar and once you right click to confirm you will see that every single segment is now separate. To clarify, the ungroup command separates the selected grouped objects and the ungroup all command can separate multiple sets of grouped objects in one operation.